Hi, my name is Mani Alikani. I am Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. The topic of today's discussion is the continuation of biology of tooth movement and specifically the biphasic theory. If you remember from the last session, we described the first phase of biphasic theory. Based on our last discussion, the real target of orthodontics forces is not the bone but the PDL. In lack of PDL, no movement can occur. In response to orthodontics forces, the inflammatory markers appear in the PDL. Inflammatory markers will activate the osteoclast, which start the bone resorption around the tooth. Osteoclasts do not just appear on the compression side, as we taught before. Osteoclasts appear both on the compression and tension side. That's very obvious in histologic section. In another word, bone resorption occurs both on the compression side and tension side. If we look at the bone closely, we will see osteopenia ap appears in the alveolar bone around the tooth that is target of orthodontics forces and that increase the mobility of the tooth. So yes, when you are applying orthodontics forces to the tooth of your patient, having some degree of mobility is normal. But what happened next? The osteoclasts that are in the area, they started to recruit the osteoblast or bone forming cells. Osteoclasts recruit the osteoblast through different pathway. One, by secreting molecules that can recruit the osteoblast or activate the osteoblast. The second pathway by direct contact between the osteoclast and osteoblast. And the third pathway is when the osteoclast is starting to resorb the bone, they expose some protein on the surface of the bone that will attract the osteoblast to come and start the second phase or bone formation phase. Well, is there any evidence that can support this idea? Well, if we look at the markers of the osteoclast, for example, in this graph, you can see the rank ligand as one of the markers of osteoclast or catapsin K. Those markers appear very early in orthodontics tooth movement. On the other hand, the marker of the bone formation in these examples, we are using osteoclastin and osteopontin, they appear later during orthodontics tooth movement. Uh, the second evidence that support this observation is application of anti-inflammatory medication. If you remember from previous discussion, we discussed that the anti-inflammatory medication decreases osteoclast activity. In another word, it prevents the bone resorption. Now, usually anti-inflammatory medication in the dosage that we are using does not affect the osteoblast. Let's do an experiment and expose our animals to anti-inflammatory medication. Yes, the osteoclast activity decreased significantly, but surprisingly, the osteoblast activity also decreased significantly, which support the idea that osteoclasts are necessary for osteoblast activity. Let's summarize the content of the previous discussion and today's discussion as one biphasic theory. In response to application of orthodontics forces, the inflammatory markers appear around the tooth and that inflammatory markers activate the osteoclast. So if you look at the histologic sections of the tooth that have received orthodontics forces, you can see a section of the root with the activation of the osteoclast all around the root, not just only on the compression side. Of course, in compression side, you have more osteoclasts due to the significant higher magnitude of trauma produced by compression forces. Then, as we discussed before, the osteoclast start to recruit the osteoblast. If we represent the osteoclast activity as a red cycle and represent the osteoblast activity as blue cycle, you will see dynamically over time the red cycle is replaced by blue cycle. However, as the tooth movement in response to orthodontics forces continues, the red cycles move forward while the blue cycles stays behind. Now, 
if you look at the section of orthodontics tooth movement not at all single time during the tooth movement and you just catch it later on you will think that the compression cause bone resorption and tension cause bone formation this concludes the biphasic theory that explain the phenomenon that occurs during the orthodontics tooth movement in response to orthodontics forces based on this theory the executor cells for the biphasic theory are osteoblast and osteoclast the mediators are the inflammatory markers and the outcome is catabolic phase first followed with the anabolic phase I hope you enjoyed this session of Citor channel. If you have not subscribed to our channel so far, please go ahead and subscribe and please don't forget to press the like button. Thank you.